That's your answer for solve. Graph it on a number line. I just did. That's it. There's the x number line, and that black thing is the solution. Okay. Now, I'm going to make final two notes now that I've answered the question. Have a look at my answer there. If I just gave you question four by itself and didn't ask you question three, it's very likely, because I went around and I saw some of you who did this, it's very likely that you would have drawn something like this. Like that, or, or even like, like that, okay? With the circle sort of hovering somewhere and this line going around somewhere. Now, can anyone tell me why I avoid doing this and I prefer this? Can anyone see from the diagram why this is actually unhelpful? What do you reckon, Russell? Like, because if you like, bring it up one, it's kind of like saying that it's like a, like a coordinate on the y. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. If I write that, um, draw that line, the horizontal line that's part of my solution that I've graphed, if I draw it vertically up, do you see that actually has meaning? Right? That means something different where you choose to put that vertically. So therefore, I don't want to put it vertically up above. I need to write on that line. It's on the number line, not somewhere in the vicinity of the number line. So draw it right on. Now I promised, I said, I would tell you about the word and and where it's useful. I want you to come back to this question. Underneath it, I want you to write a question five. Okay, so all I've done is I've taken question four and I've reversed the direction of the inequality. Okay, this is where the word and comes in. If I go ahead and do this algebraically, you'll do this just like you did before, except the inequality is basically a different way. Now, if you have a look at that in the first line, you compare it to this. The solution is no longer the outside part, is it? I don't want the part that's above 4. I want the part that's beneath 4. So that's like in between here. Do you see it? Right. So if I were to graph that, I guess it would be, um, I guess it would be in between. Yeah. I don't have another number line to do it. I'm drawing yet. So how am I going to write this in algebra? Hmm. Well, again, going from left to right, I want x to be greater than negative root 3. Okay. You see there's negative root 3, I want to be greater than that. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to the right. But I also want to be less than positive root 3. Do you see from here I've got to go to the left? Okay. Now, what word do I put between these? Right, so can't you just make it one x? And I'll talk about that in a second. I will show you how to do that. Okay. I have to use and. Here's why. If I had put or in there, I'll just write it just so you have it, but don't, don't copy it down. Just so you have it as a mental object and you can compare it. Tell me, think about this. What kinds of numbers are included that satisfy that green inequality? What kinds of numbers would work? You can be this, or alternatively, if you like, you can be this. Hmm. Let's think of a number like, say, does zero satisfy either of those inequalities? Is x greater than negative root 3? It is, right? And therefore, I don't even care about the other one because it's four, one or the other. No big deal. You do one, that's fine. Okay. What about um, x equals 3? Does that satisfy one of the inequalities? Well, it satisfies this one, doesn't it? 3 is greater than negative root 3. I mean, it's positive. That's negative. So it also checks out. And I don't care about this one because it's all. One is fine. Guess what? All values of x satisfy that green line. It's not very useful to us, is it? We actually want to restrict the domain. That's what we're talking about. Okay? So that's why you have to use the word and. Alternatively, if you're anti-word, you can write it as a single inequality like that. Okay, and you can see it goes from smaller numbers to bigger, which is why the directions of the inequality side face in that direction. Does that make sense? Okay, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, sure. Can you do it um, the reverse, so for your in initial, like... You um, mean for this one? Yeah. You mean write it like this? Like uh, so? Yeah. Yeah? 
The short answer is yes, but I will never write an answer like that and I will never tell you to do so. Here's why. If you were to take this and sort of jam them together, this is what you would get. You can see I've reversed that direction of the inequality side and chucked it over here. Okay. I don't like this though because it kind of implies, hey look, I've got a single portion of the number line, right? X is between this and this, but it's not between this and this. It's actually on the outsides, right? So it's a far more meaningful and clearer way to say it to actually write two separate inequalities. It also helps you avoid confusing this with this, right? I only ever write them as one set when I only ever have one interval, and that way I don't get confused, okay?